Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. I'm back with another Inktober video. This time it's a master study using Inktense blocks. As you might know, I try to post both made up original pieces and studies from references on my channel. I'm gonna start by inking my pencil drawing with a zig marker. This marker is archival, pigment based, and waterproof. I'm doing a study of an old book cover illustrated by Trina Shart Hyman. A very talented woman who illustrated over 150 books from the 1960s to 2006. So it's not surprising I chose to do an essay on her in grad school and read a lot of books illustrated by her when I was younger. The illustration I'm doing is Trina's cover of Dealing with Dragons by Patricia Reedy. Halloween is coming up, so I thought it would be even more fun if I did this study and made Simmerine's face more like mine versus Trina's version. Sort of like dressing up in a costume on paper. Just some artistic fun. <laughs> I also swapped out the frying pan with a fantastical pumpkin. More Halloween-y and all. I'm using Arch's cold pressed watercolor paper. And it'll take a beating, but the marker nib still makes thicker lines in some places because of the paper's texture and bumps. And I had that issue with lines looking thicker and off a bit for her hand. So remember, hot press or Bristol vellum finish is better for controlled fine marker lines. Once the ink lines are done, I'm going to start with the colored inks using Inktense blocks. Rather than coloring with the Inktense sticks or wetting them directly, I've scraped the chosen colors into wells on a palette with an X-Acto knife. I'm using a limited palette of three colors, number 500, Chili Red, number 220, Sicilian Yellow, and number 830, Navy Blue. The red is pretty vibrant or high intensity, but both the yellow and blue are duller, low intensity colors, and this will give the painting a dark and spooky mood. Perfect for a princess that lives with the king of dragons. I'm gonna start with laying down a thin wash of local color for everything so that it's all color coded when I come back. And then I can apply more rich color and details to things later. You can choose to just work completely on one object at a time, but I did find that the local color washes did help clarify things as it's a detailed and cluttered piece. The Intense blocks are a unique product. They're an ink so they're transparent and they don't lift off once they dry on the paper, which means that they're waterproof. However, they also layer surprisingly well. Unlike some waterproof inks and also acrylics, they don't have this skin once dry, so they can be used with watercolors too. Unlike my Dr. Phil Martin's inks, which dry with that plasticky skin that repels further watercolor paint and layers. Like the Phil Martin's, the ink tents are light fast, but unlike most other inks, including the Phil Martins, they re-wet on a palette even if you let them dry there. So I actually let the colors I put on here dry overnight on a porcelain palette and the next day they were reusable and re-wettable like watercolors, which seems magical for a product that is waterproof on paper or fabric once dry. I'm restricting myself to the three colors so her hair doesn't mix to a true black. It'll have to be a dark blue instead, but that reads as black so that's okay. And look at how sharply the red dress stands out against the complementary greenish dragon and relatively duller colors. And the books form a really nice echo of red on the other side of the piece. The background is crosshatched in ink and I actually used a black pencil sign pen in the background so that it'll be runny when I use a wet brush over it. You can still see some of the crosshatching but there will be a nice dark cave background because the pencil ink runs. I kept the Dragon Kuzzle scales a lot more minimal than Trina's version. I'm just doing a study and I didn't feel like doing all these exact scales in repetitive ink lines. It just made me scared of hand cramps. <laughs> doing the plaid design and the apron now. And it's such a surprisingly mundane element from an everyday kitchen in this fantasy piece. It adds such a cool touch of relatability and believability. I'm going to start the detailed painting now. I've made the pumpkin a totally Mackenzie child style pumpkin. I just love the checked embellished design. Now I'm going to do the china and the patterns on it with a diluted red and also darken up the chocolate mousse and the whipped cream. <laughs> I'm aging the book with yellow and adding distant text and images. Imagine it would be a combination recipe and spell book if it comes from a dragon's library. I'm going to try and make the table more interesting for the same reason because 
It does belong to a dragon, so instead of making it just brown or tan, I'm going to try to put in maroon and orange and yellow-orange. The Simmering Sword, I'll add yellow and orange to the gold highlighted parts, and the ruby in the hilt, and a greenish-brown mix for the shadows on the leather scabbard and belt and boots. I'm going to give Simmering a nice olive skin tone and work out some details into her face with a spotter brush. I can't forget to give her wells under her eyes, and Trina had the right idea here because Simmering is a wild and edgy sort of princess. I used a few white dots of gouache to highlight her eyes, and this is the only place where white was used in this piece. Moving on to the gigantic mass of the dragon, I'll take the easy route and use my old standby wet into wet blooms. A great way to make larger shapes interesting is just with texture. I've mixed a grade green, a grade blue, a dull yellow green and orange, and a dull violet using my same old three colors, and I'm going to use these mixes to paint the dragon. For the dragon's facial shadows, I'm going to revert to wet on dry so there's no bleeding and I can control it more. She's also got a really wild and intelligent look and that's why she goes well with the princess. And yeah, this king of dragons is a she and it's really nice how the Inktense colors really don't lift at all. I did notice that Inktense is not as vibrant as quality transparent watercolors. They dry duller and quite a bit less glossy very matte looking. The sticks also use up faster than watercolor pans, probably because I'm using more of the Inktense blocks to make them look darker and more vibrant than I would with, say, Schmincke watercolor or gouache. Here's the finished piece. I had a blast doing an Inktober and Halloweeny piece referencing a favorite illustrator and book from when I was younger. Thanks for watching. Hope you like and comment and subscribe. See you next time and good luck with all your magical painting adventures.